Hello and welcome to Treasure Vessels, our podcast where we want to discuss your songs in the light of the living word of God. Hey, good morning, good morning everyone. It is a little bit of a cool and crisp morning here um, in October in Lexington, Kentucky. And this is Carolyn Burnett coming to you again on Treasure Vessels with... Um, Jonathan Souter in Germany and Manasse Nan in India and our special guest today. Uh, Manasse, uh, what time is it there? Right now it is um, 8.22 in the morning here. Oh, uh, hello there. Uh, it's around 5.52 p.m. in the evening. And uh, um, the day has been fine so far and I'm little excited today that we are in London for the first time in our TV, our Treasure Vessel journey, I believe. And so let's welcome a beautiful singer with a bright smile and roses are blue. That's what our, our name is in South Cloud. So welcome to Treasure Vessels. Hi, thank you. <laughs> I'm really glad to be here. We're, we're uh, so glad to have you with us, Rose. What time is it there in London? Um, it is nearly half past one in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a nice sunny day. Yeah, it is actually. It's sunny, but it's cold. It's quite windy. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, in the area where you live, is that is it city? Is it country, rural? What is it like around where you live? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not actually in London. Um, I live in a place called Forest, which is actually a really old forest. Um, so yeah, it's very, very, very rural. It's um, woods for miles, and yeah, it's lovely. It's really beautiful. It sounds nice. So lots of trees and countryside. Oh, yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. Very, very nice. Um, I live in the city in Lexington, but uh, just a few minutes, you can be out in the country here. We're we are surrounded by countryside. Um, so on SoundCloud, people know you as Roses Are Blue, and um, and so your name is actually Rose. Is yeah. Right? Okay. So, so um, that's good because that's what I've been calling you. <laughs> and uh, I heard your music um, through um, Rothweiler. Uh, I know that you sang at least one or more songs uh, with him playing. And uh, uh, yeah. so, you. Yeah. Quite a few, actually. Mm -hmm. okay. on. <laughs> yeah, I know that um, I listen a lot at work, and so I can't always turn the sound up or read the words or read who's playing what. But I do like to click on like one person's page, and I've done that on your page a couple of times, and just let the songs play. But like I said, I can't pay a lot of attention at work. But um, I know I had seen his name on there, and that's um, and I had heard you singing on his page before it was actually removed from SoundCloud, so by someone. Uh, so anyway, um, Rose, uh, let's um. Let's actually listen to a little clip of uh, some of your music and then I'll ask you some more questions. <laughs> I'm not here in 91. When you break it up
sound rose it's 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 upbeat it's um fun and friendly but yet um you say some pretty cool things that are uh, really interesting and i like your lyrics i like the way you sing and i really like the uh the second tune there um you, 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 you. <laughs> that's it's really great hey i, I want to show you something this is my this is my notebook that I've been using for treasure vessels since we started, and um, like I mean it's full of people like there's um, Coed 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 Flello yeah he's one of them and then here's like the Sandman's Orchestra these are all my notes where where I you know study and get and get prepared for everybody you know there's Alice Leon. <laughs> You know, and I've got so many people. Here's Milana, you know, oh. and and I just have more and more and more people. You know, here's um, Gabriel Van Orr, uh, Van Gabe, and then who's the very last person in my book? It's you. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> See, there you are. Oh wow! Yeah. So you I to, me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get a new book yeah. after you. Ooh. So hey, hey, you know if if we were famous, that book would be worth something yeah. someday. <laughs> so hey, um, okay. So tell us a little bit about your music and when did you start singing and writing songs? Um, uh, I don't know really. Um, I've always um, like played the piano since I was really young. We just like had a piano in our house, so I just always played it, and I just always made up really random songs on it. And then um, when I got older, I had piano lessons. The, well, all my school years, just piano lessons, which I actually hated. <laughs> so it's weird how much I just love my piano still because I despise lessons. Um, so, yeah, that's really it. So I've just always done songs and maybe um, in times of stress or boredom or anything, I've just sat down on my own and just... Just some things, you know, just made something, sung something, expressed something, um, just a mood, nothing particularly complicated or, you know, thought about. Just, just play, just, just make whatever you feel, and that's just what I've done. So, um, I guess actually, uh, record, you know, recording music and recording songs is is kind of something quite new that um, I've only done. Um, in the last sort of year and a half, uh, so I'm still sort of learning that, you know, the skill of just making like a song sound <laughs> good for other people. Um, but yeah, that's that's it really. <laughs> mhm. Mm so, so you do you think that you do or don't have any kind of particular uh, format that you go through to write a song? No, it's literally just just sit down and just something will materialize out of nothing really. I never, well, maybe once I have, um, but I've never really sat down and thought, right, I'm gonna make a song about this. I've just played, you know, there's been a mood. I've just, and, and often when I sing, I've, you know, I don't write anything down. It would just be like whatever kind of pops in my head at the moment. That's probably um, why sometimes it sounds quite weird. <laughs> what, mm -hmm. I, what I sing, what I say, cause it's just literally um, caught in that exact moment. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes afterwards, I think, oh my goodness, what have I said? Why did I say that? But <laughs> it was just like in the moment. So that's, that's mm -hmm. just how I do it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, sometimes we write songs that have a lot of different meanings, a lot of different experiences put together. And um, 
even even the one that we um, are going to talk about today of yours called Life is Love, the um, the lyrics are pretty interesting and, and I could take them um, more than one direction and um, I've actually got them here in front of me, but um, do you, if you have them or if you just know them off the top of your head, do you want to say them all or would you like me to read them? I can't remember them, so can you read them? <laughs> uh, that's okay, I'm the same way. It, if you were to ask me to do it for mine, I'd be the same way. Okay, so I'll read your lyrics here. It says, um, I'm not drowning in the rain. I'm not lost in the fog. I'm not burning in the sun. I'm not hearing anyone. When you break it all down, when you figure it out, life isn't life. Life isn't time. Life is love. Life is love. Life is love. I'm not calling your name, I'm not feeling any pain, not wasting away, I'm so glad you stayed. Life is love. So, uh, did you have any, really any specific particular meaning when you wrote that, or was that? Um, yeah, I kind of did. Um, I, I wrote it for someone, um, kind of, um, we'd lost someone that they love, and, um, I kind of wanted to make them feel better and um, offer some kind of comfort, I guess. And um, I suppose the the verse um, is a strange twist because, you know, when you lose someone you love, um, mm -hmm. you're feeling, you know, you're missing them, you're feeling sad for, you know, what they're missing in life, you know. Um, but I, I guess the verse actually is saying that um, for the person that's died in a really strange way, um, they're actually not experiencing all the, the hardships that we are as living. So um, oh, it's quite hard to explain. Um, so just it's basically saying, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling pain. You know, I'm not, I'm not ill. I'm not hurt. I'm, you know, kind of free. So it's kind of quite mm -hmm. weird, but I suppose. Um, the verse is somebody maybe that's died that's sort of singing back to the living and saying, you know, I'm not here, but actually, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not experiencing the bad things anymore. It's hmm. a strange kind of angle. Um. <laughs> that's really interesting. I hadn't thought about it being about a person who had died. I, I thought that maybe you wrote the song about um, love, you know, I could see in my mind, you know, like, like a movie, you know, like, here you are, um, your heart is just longing after this person and you're standing in the pouring rain looking for them or you're, or you're lost in the fog looking for them or, kind of or you're out in the burning sun looking for them and it's kind and of then it's, it, it, it is a love song. <laughs> Um, it is a love song. Yeah. It was also um, written um, to kind of comfort someone that was going through something. So it, it's, it, it kind of has, like most of my songs, like a, a double meaning. It can mean um, two things. And, and it is it is a love song. So mm -hmm. right on that. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. really, like in love. So, yeah. Well, it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty neat thing because, you know, in love – you will experience a lot of these things, even if you're not literally standing in the rain, you could be, you know, having a, you know, you could be crying, that could be, you know, a, a metaphor for tears, or, or it could be, you know, a, a feeling inside of you. Um, you know, you could be lost in your brain fog of, uh, you know, thinking of somebody and, and not being able to focus or just being, you know, in a stupor, just like uh, not being able to think at all and um, not hearing anything. And so that that verse is really neat that you can take it all those different ways. Um, the, um, the next part, it says, when you break it all down, when you figure it out, life isn't life, life isn't time, life is love. And um, how did you, uh, how did you come up with that thought? Um, I guess just caught, <laughs> caught 
caught in the moment of um, singing and, and feeling, and as you say, it is it is a love song. Um, and I guess just just a song that's just kind of saying, um, kind of all that matters is is loving and being loved, and and that really is the ultimate. That's kind of everything. It's what it's all about. Um, other things just don't matter, and that's kind of all there is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in relating it to death again, um, you know, saying life um, is a time, it's it's love, that's what's left. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. Now I have, you know, that we use the Bible when we talk here, and um, both Manasseh and I have plenty of scriptures to share, but I want to go ahead and uh, let Manasseh um, share something that he's uh, found. Oh, wow. It, it was very interesting to uh, know um, your thoughts rose about the song. I mean, um, we both were thinking that you know, like uh, it's a love song, and um, after knowing your thought, it's a uh, very um, different view of right now, and it's it's very interesting as Carolyn said. And um, right now, when I'm looking at the first words, like you know, I'm not drowning in the rain. I'm not lost in the fog. Uh, I'm just getting a thought about like, you know, um, it's about like someone who's feeling um, kind of um, uh, lonely or, you know, like um, God sent his own son. Like what I'm looking at is like God sent his own son for each and every one, every individual, so that, you know, like uh, they um, will feel love. You know, the, uh, the love of God that he wants to share with everyone. And it's not like uh, a poor or just the rich. Uh, there's no um, uh, differences here. He's talking about everyone when he says, like, you know, I'm sending my own son. Uh, because he loves us so much that he um, gave life of his own son. So that's how I relate life and love here. That, you know, even... The breath we uh, have in us, the Spirit of God, that is again um, the love because many say that God is love and you know the love is God, and that's how I relate here. But the life is the love, what kind of love. It's like love and life is two sides of one coin, you know, um, and people choose to focus more on the other side, life. Like how to make it grand or how to make it very special, and people forget like to focus on uh, love most of the time, and they become very selfish, and you know they focus so much on themselves only, and they sometimes neglect their families and close ones and the things which we are supposed to focus on much. So so far, like um, that's the main thought I have had uh, to this song. And uh, just one verse I would like to quote here, um, which is uh, the golden verse we say, John 3.16, that, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So, you know, our life and love are very related here, that, you know, God so loved so that he can have the eternal life. So, uh, this will attract him uh, more on this song. And um, just wanted to share this with us. Well, there's... Um that's one of the things I like about uh, both Manasseh and I when we uh, study separately. We both kind of get different angles on things. And, um, um, and so... And, and of course, I... I um, I also had thought about some of that, um, what he spoke, but then I kind of went off in a little bit of a different direction, and um, and I thought, well, you know, one of the things I wanted to look at in the Bible was, you know, what does it say in the Old Testament about love? And um, one of the first things I found was in Deuteronomy chapter 30, it says, you know, God said, I lay before you a choice between life and death. Choose life. And he says, love the Lord your God and obey his voice and cling to him. 
um, for that means life to you. And so it's like, um, it's almost like which came first, life or love, you know? Um, it's, you know, I don't know if, if we as human beings can even answer the question, you know, what is love? We, uh, you know, to me, uh, love is, an, is a noun and a verb, both. I mean, um, and it's more than that. And can you have life without love? You know, I don't think so. Um, there's one scripture out of um, Corinthians that, you know, it's, it's several verses long, long, so I wouldn't read the whole thing, but, but it talks about, um, it says, you know, even if I can, you know, speak with the tongue of angels, or if I have a gift of prophecy, or I know all mysteries, or I have all knowledge and wisdom, if I have faith, and if I can move mountains, but I don't have love, then I'm nothing. You know, um, if I give everything I have to the poor and I surrender my body to be burned, but I don't have love, then I don't have anything. And um, it's like, you know, love is such an important thing that we can't, uh, it, whatever we do doesn't mean anything if, if, um, if there's not love involved. And then it goes on to say, love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, it does not brag about itself, it is not arrogant, love does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, it is not provoked, it does not take ac account uh, for wrong that is suffered, and love rejoices, um, with the truth, but does not rejoice with unrighteousness. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things, and love never fails. And, you know, it's like, just like your song, it's, um, what's, what, what left, what's remaining is love, you know, when you strip it all down. So, um, that's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool thought that you had that you know came to you uh, for writing this song and and those words. So have we left you speechless on all of this? You have any? <laughs> yes, we have. I just yeah, I'm just taking in all that you said, and mm -hmm. it's kind of good, good timing. Yeah, it's kind of good timing. Yeah, it's just good timing, what you've just said. <laughs> mm, that's good. That's I good. Mean, it's the, meaning, the meaning of love and, and, and what it is. And um, we, we all just completely forget. We, we just mm. go around and we forget. And, uh, yeah, we that's just true. go around just thinking um, what you just said. You know, like, love isn't jealous and, and those things. It's so true. You know, so I mean, we can we can talk about some of this stuff. I mean, what is what does the world think about as as love? You know, what's the world's definition of love that you see every day in life? It seems more self centered, mm -hmm. more about feeling, and more about what we want for ourselves. You know, like I need to love myself and. I need to do for myself and do this because, you know, it, it, a lot of it has to do with motive, don't you think? Um, and, uh, you know, but then there, there are a lot of scriptures in the Bible, too. You know, it says that um, because God, because God loves us, he's, he does, he takes care of us and he um, will protect us, you know. And so, um, yeah, talking about the current um, world, how uh, the world takes uh, love, as um, as Carolyn just said, that you know, self-centered. Like most of the time, we just try to focus on our things and our stuff. And there's one scripture I would like to quote for that, and uh, it is from um, 
First uh, John 4 12 it says no one has ever seen God but if we love each other God lives in us and his love has been brought to full expression through us and then um, one more verse I would like to quote here which says um, so now I am giving you a new commandment love each other just as I have loved you you should love each other so that is the part which is missing in the current world, you know, like we, instead of loving each other, we love our own uh, uh, desires or, you know, we are just focused on what we have to do or we have to accomplish or what we have to achieve in life or, you know, most of us are just um, loving um, money, basically, you know, just trying to get a lot of money. And that's how, in the end, uh, people realize that how far they have lost. Because, you know, um, if we will uh, forget the basic um, basic thing of love, you know, and focus more on life part, and, you know, self-life or, you know, like um, if I am not calling my mom every day and just, you know, busy with, you know, um, everyday routine, yeah. then definitely my mom will uh, feel that, you know, I, I don't love her anymore. So these basic things are... Um, uh, just um, missing in this current world, the current generation we are into, or the times we are going into. Um, you know, um, God just wants us to remember the basic um, um, nature of love. You know, that's what uh, even miss with our God. You know, like uh, people say, okay, I do pray on Sunday, or I do pray on Saturday, or just once in a week, and then. Um, that's how we miss the relationship of a father and son with God, which he is looking for. And that is where this current world is going. Like if we talk about like how the world takes it, uh, the love as, you know, the, um, in personal life or, you know, as a family life. Wow, I'm guilty. I need to call my mother now today. <laughs> I never call my <laughs> Yeah, we're yeah. All, we are all guilty of it. It's like, in this day and age as well, there's just, well, it sounds, you know, pathetic. It sounds, it's pieces, but there is so much going on in everyone's life, isn't there? That even things like phone calls and emails and just doing simple things with, like, your family, your, you know, it's, people don't have the time. And, yeah, I think it's just, you have to remember quite clearly. You have to remember who you love mm -hmm. and, and love them. Yeah, yeah, that is like the, the main thing that's being said everywhere. I'm so busy, I'm so busy. Yeah. My dad writes my, writes me emails and he'll be like, I know you're busy, yeah. you know, and like, gosh, I need to call him, I need to call my mother. Um, Manasse is good, he calls his mom every day. Oh, Probably I don't more than I, once. Oh, she calls mom. you. <laughs> yeah, she, like, she calls me so... Are you all right then? <laughs> <laughs> but still, like, um, um, that's not what exactly I mean. I mean, not just, you know, um, because uh, Satan, as we call the other uh, bad guy, you know, he's trying to make us all busy with different things, which is, again, important in our life, you know. Uh, like, uh, in our current day, our current uh, life, or current routine, or lifestyle, uh, we have lots of things going on, as you said, Rose, that, you know, um, which are very important. We cannot ignore them as well. But still, um, we can try to push a little more and, you know, uh, have a uh, connection with all who we love. So, you know, like um, some of the other things that I was looking up um, that caught my eye, because there are, there are a lot, a lot of scriptures about love in the Bible. And about life too. Yeah, but a couple uh, of them uh, that jumped out at me. Yeah, the book, um, the Bible is huh. about love and life, so yeah, <laughs> every yeah. Picture is about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I liked. Um, there's a lot of scriptures that talk about love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength. And then um, Song of Solomon is really like a. It's it's um, like a love song to us. And um, 
there's a scripture right in the beginning, a line that says, your love is better than wine. And um, and then there's uh, one of the minor prophets, Zephaniah, um, in chapter 3, it says, the Lord God, and there's a lot of other things it says, but it says, he will renew me with his love. You know, and so, I mean, how often have we felt renewed by the love of someone else? You know, when you, you feel someone's love coming towards you, how it lifts you up, you can't, you actually feel something inside. You know, you can feel something from other people, even from far away. And um, so love is, <clears throat> love is a force and a power and, Maybe love is life, you know, I don't know. Are we smart enough to, can, do we have the capacity to try to figure that out? I'm, there are a lot of smart, a lot more smarter people on this earth than me. Um, okay, so uh, talking about life, though, there, it, it's, it's, it's a lot more than, than I can really put together. Um, there was a scripture in uh, Proverbs that I read this morning in chapter 12. It says, In the path of righteousness is life, but the way to error leads to death. And so, you know, there are so many different things to be said about that. The path of righteousness is life. Um, you know, being righteous is... Um, not something that we could possibly do as human beings. There's no one righteous, not one. Uh, only Jesus was the only one who was ever righteous. But we, when we believe in Jesus and we accept what he did for us, then God puts his righteousness upon us. And so, so being in that way, um, having the righteousness of, of God upon you, that leads to life. You guys are pretty quiet over there. <laughs> I can keep going. So, okay, yeah. in Proverbs, Proverbs 8, it says, He who finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who misses me injures himself. And he who hates me loves death. So there's a, your, one of your contrasting scriptures, you know. You've got... If you find God, and, and he says, you know, in the Bible, if you seek for me like you seek for gold or hidden treasure, what you seek for you will find. You know, knock and the door will be open unto you. Ask and it shall be given unto you. But, you know, do it with a serious attitude and heart. And when you find him, you will find favor in the Lord. You will, if you look for him, you'll find him. He's right there. Um... So, okay, I'm sorry, Manasi, what were you going to say? Uh, nothing. I was just um, um, thinking about um, um, life, but you know, when you were talking like uh, what exactly life um, means in the Bible or you know, the scriptures which you were quoting. Again, as I said, this book we have, uh, we call Bible, is the book of life, as my dad says, or many people say, I consider it. Um, it is like why we call it scriptures because it's like a script we have to uh, you know read for our daily life thing and what it teaches us is to love one another as I quoted the uh, um, verses before and um, life um, is a gift from God people say and how it is a gift um, I would like to quote one more scripture here which is from Job 27.3, which says, as long as I live, while I have breath from God. Because we all know that, you know, God breathed his uh, spirit in us, his life in us. And, you know, mm -hmm. he poured his love in us. When he was creating us, you know, he was doing nothing, but he was pouring his love in us. And that's what we all have to carry. You know, um, again, I'm just uh, getting in a cycle of love and life. Because both are so related to me that uh, I think um, both, uh, like if we focus too much on life, we are missing on love, which is the basic. Or actually, 
uh, as you said, you know, um, life, um, as you said in some, uh, life is love. It is nothing else but life is love. And that is what, mm -hmm. um, you know, I also believe. That, That's uh, really good. Yeah. That's good, Manasse. Hey, you know what? Let's listen to the tune, Life is Love. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not drowning in the rain I'm not lost in the fog I'm not burning in the sun I'm not hearing anyone Listening to those words, you know, now after you telling me, you know, why you were really inspired to write this song about someone dying, you know, thinking about the words here, I'm not calling your name, I'm not feeling any pain, I'm not wasting away, you know. You could easily mistake it. I mean, it's a funny thing because it, it is a love song, but it's, uh -huh. it's kind of a contrast between like death and love and life and those kind of three things like all in one song do you know what i mean and it's yeah it really is about um you know the voice of someone who's died and then the voice i guess the chorus um of just kind of life and love and something sort of uplifting coming from that so it, i suppose it is quite an odd song actually when you <laughs> when you analyze your own song you actually realize oh my gosh there was quite a lot going on there um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I came home from work and um, I just sort of had all these thoughts all day. And um, in my job, I'm looking after people that are dying also. And um, I just came home and in my nurse's uniform <laughs> did that song. <laughs> so um, wow, I'm so I'm glad like, you I'm stayed. Quite a few miserable songs, so I suppose that's me. That's quite a um, well, probably as happy as my songs get, <laughs> but. Yeah, it's definitely well, one. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I feel uh, it's a very beautiful song because, you know, um, if someone is uh, dying or, you know, in that state, definitely this song can help and realize them that life is now that, you know, they can still have the uh, eternal life, as I said. You know, um, the scripture says, like, whosoever believes can, um, will perish the eternal life uh, God is offering through his son. Because that, that is um, what God is showing um, love to us and he, uh, how he uh, loves us and uh, he sacrificed his son because of our sins. And, yeah, so that we will not have any um, death or any pain and we will have that eternal life. You know, um, I mean, even to me right now, this song means something because uh, my husband's... Uh, mother she's terminally ill and he's staying at her house 24 hours a day right now and and you know 
I could see her saying, you know, these things to him, and I'm so glad you stayed, you know. You know, she she's uh, got all her faculties about her. Uh, she sleeps a lot, and um, she doesn't eat very much. But um, when she wakes up, she'll be like, you don't need to be staying here. You need to go home, you know. <laughs> and she can't walk, you know, to the bathroom by herself. And everybody knows nobody's going anywhere, She, you know. And so, I, you know... This is a this is a really really um, thoughtful. I mean, even though you say it just came out of you, there's a lot of deepness in this song. Um, when you in the part where you say life isn't life, life isn't time. Um, but still, don't you think time is really an important thing to spend with people that you love? It is. I, I kind of. Um sort of clarify that um you know i've lost people close to me that i love and maybe when someone dies there's always a feeling of guilt and of i should have spent time with them i should have very more i should have done more you know there's always that feeling um you know in grief of feeling you should have done more you know you should have you know done more i've had it with my dad um with my brother felt these things and um Although, you know, obviously, um, you know, time together with anyone you love is the most important thing. But I guess um, my, my point in the song is that it's not always about how much time you spend. It's about the love you feel and the love that is there. That's what you have to take away. That's the most important thing is the love. It's not the time. It's not the, the other things. It's just the love that you're kind of left with. That's all there is. Mm-hmm. That's true, uh, because, you know, like, if you have a really strong love connection with someone, you can go a long time without seeing them, and it's still there. Yeah. You just take up where you left off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's see, I kind of wanted to go back to something, um, Manasse, that you said before we listened to the tune, and... Um, in John 12, it says, um, he who loves his life will, he will lose it. Let me see. Wait a minute. No, I have it actually written on my computer screen in Matthew. Um, it says, he who finds his life shall lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake shall find it. And it's, and it's basically, it's like, if all we are doing is being self-centered and seeking after our, our own life, our own fulfillment, our own whatever, um, then we're really losing it, not just um, in eternity because we're so selfish that we didn't love others, but you're really losing it now. I mean, it's a really lonely existence to try to just do for yourself all the time and try to get all of this attention to yourself all the time but if you um, willingly lose your life by giving it up to love others and help others you're going to find your life now and later you know and and you probably you do that a lot as a nurse I you know I didn't know you were a nurse I have the greatest respect and love for nurses let me tell you I went through hell, and 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 nurses were like angels of light to me. And so, um, where are are you in a in a hospital or a nursing home or? Oh, yeah, in a nursing home. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. So yeah, with um, el elderly people. So. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Say that yeah. again. I didn't hear you. Oh, no, I, I was just saying, my mom is also a nurse, and uh, it's been like 29 years, uh, no, almost, um, yeah, 28 years she's been uh, working as a nurse in the hospital. And, yeah, it makes me proud, like, how she's serving and taking care of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know some amazing nurses, and they, they just... They spend their whole lives, you know, their whole being is just giving and, and caring and 
you know, I admire that so much because, I mean, I've got two small children, so I'm, I'm not nursing full time at the moment. But the way that they just, you know, work and, you know, the passion they have for it is, is so amazing. And, and you realise, you know, with people like that, they, they have so got the right idea. That is the way to live. It's not about serving yourself. It is literally like giving and giving and giving and just giving a bit more <laughs> and loving a bit more and just like stop at nothing. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and that's how God is with us, uh, even though we don't realize it or see it maybe with our human eyes mm -hmm. that um, he's constantly giving to us and constantly loving on us and helping us. And so, I mean, um, the whole idea uh, of this song is, is beautiful and I, I love it. And, you know, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I, I imagine everybody listened and just maybe thought it was a love song. I don't know. You never quite know how mm -hmm. much how people interpret it. You know, it's it mm -hmm. means something different, doesn't it? And um, yeah, that was the actual. <laughs> that was what happened. It means a lot of different things, and it's and it, but it means love. You know, and uh, we could keep talking about this a lot longer, but we're um, getting a little close to our time now so um i just want to say one more time how great this this tune is and um the meaning of it on a lot of different levels i really appreciate you letting us talk about this and using the scripture to talk about it too and so um well let's um listen to uh, the next clip of your music And if anybody wants to find you on SoundCloud, they can go to soundcloud.com forward slash roses are blue, R O S E S A R E B L U E. Do you have any other websites? No, that's it. <laughs> that's okay. It makes it easy to find you. And uh, um, I know you had said something to me also about the banana song. I, that kind of went over my head. Is there a song about a banana that I missed? <laughs> Yeah, there's a song about bananas. It's a bit, um, it's a bit of a cheeky one. <laughs> okay, so how does it go? I need your banana, 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 banana. <laughs> oh, okay, banana, banana, banana. Okay, got you. So very different from from what we've discussed. <laughs> okay, yes, quite a bit, quite a bit. Yeah. And so, well, it's it's really nice to get to know you a little bit. Oh, thank you. Thanks, both for your your time and your really interesting interpretation. Mm -hmm. Definitely gives me well, 
Thank you for coming too. And so um, before we go, I mean, are you collaborating with some other people besides um, Hans um, Hoffman? No, 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 I'm, I'm just just good hands. I'm not. I'm not doing something. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's right. And he he even told us he likes the pronunciation hands. I keep saying Hans. <laughs> so <laughs> so okay. Well, um, all right. Well, then we're gonna. Um, wrap it up I guess and unless anybody else got anything else to say are you okay over there Manasseh? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty fine. <laughs> okay well good well Rose if it's okay I'd like to say a prayer for you okay um, Father God in Jesus name I just thank you so much Lord for this time and I ask you to watch over Rose I ask you to watch over her family and all those that she loves Bless her in her work and in raising her children and in her music. Pray that um, people are touched and realize what love really is and who love is. You are love, God. We ask you to draw people to yourself with your love. Thank you for hearing and answering this prayer and for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you again, Rose. We'll see you soon, okay? Yeah, take care. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. We appreciate your listening to Treasure Vessels of the Living Word. You can find us and make comments on the audio tracks at our website, treasure-vessels.com. We hope you come back soon for our next podcast. Until then, God bless and thank you for listening.